Gavin. Hi, Nina. Hi, Devin. Hi. Sophia Soda with the Nerds of Color. Hello. And I'm so excited to speak with all of you. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Pleasure to have you guys. I got to see the movie. Excellent, excellent work. And the first thing I want to ask you is what did you each consider to be kind of the key to playing multiple characters for this film? I, I mean, I think the key for us really was getting one week of rehearsals before we started filming, which is very rare, but Greg, our director, was amazing at making sure we had a lot of time. And we also had really generous and, and collaborative actors. We were all really wanting to get immersed in each mm -hmm. other's characters. And so I think that was just, it, it created an openness and ability for us to all really communicate, collaborate. And I think that was essential into like really getting to, yeah. to become those other characters. Yeah, I was gonna say open communication. Mm -hmm. I feel like we all felt very comfortable talking with each other and yeah. yeah. Teamwork, baby. Teamwork. Teamwork yeah. makes the dream work. <laughs> That's yeah. right. <laughs> I'm sure you guys had such productive conversations during that time, but also learned so much from each other. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you learned from each other while you were doing that week of rehearsals, but also filming the actual project? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like um, we got really lucky in the sense that there weren't a lot of, like, egos on set. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. when you're on, a, like, when you're on one that doesn't have that kind of energy, you notice it. And it was just like this really, like Alicia said, and I mean, what we're all kind of saying, this collaborative team effort. And we all just wanted to make the best damn thing. So, you know, we can, we can as actors, set aside our own whatever so that we can make something really good. And yeah. I don't know, we were just lucky, hey? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we were lucky. Yeah. You also lucky. learn to ask the right questions when you're moving at the, the kind of speed that we're moving at. Mm. You kind of learn to be as efficient as possible. So we kind of, yeah, we're kind of immersing ourselves in the world, but also being kind and knowing that it's it's now someone else's character. It's not mm. just your character. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true, yeah. And actually going off of that, the character you start with, I'm gonna say the character you begin to play before the swap, what was kind of one quality or a tell that you came up with so that fans can kind of keep up and point them out during the swap? Oh, yeah. Whoa. yeah. Really good. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> deep <laughs> question. Yeah. It's a deep cut. I got it. I got to come with the good questions, yeah. guys. Come That's a on. Good one. I feel like all of our little ticks started to come naturally. And just from like observing each other, I would pick up stuff. But for Maya, I mean, Maya's definitely a character in herself and she already kind of has that like mellowish like maybe stones like what's going on there vibe to her that i think was definitely pretty stone. definite yeah, definitely absolutely stone. stones yeah. um <laughs> but everyone just has like a different internal energy like maya's very different from brooke's internal energy so i think that was a difference as well mm. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I think we all started off I, I like to call it our baseline characters because that's sort of like where we started. And again, with that one week of, week of rehearsals, we, we did start to decide like, okay, this could be a tick that could easily be followed through. And I remember like, you know, for Cyrus, there was sort of like a stutter and like couldn't finish a sentence. And so that was like a real through line. I think, you know, for Dennis, there was like a lot of bro. And like for Nikki, there seemed to be like a lot of like, hair yeah. like yeah. you know play or kind of whatever you so, had nails I had and nails. so when i was yeah. going into nikki i was like nails yes. like she has in, like, that's in her head yes like that's and like maya doesn't have that but she still has that quality Feel. or something yeah 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 yeah. Cool. yeah yeah boys yeah, yeah. yeah. everything y'all said yeah yeah, I think I was just, I talked to Greg and I was like, I think there needs to be a physical nature to the character, mm -hmm. but also saying man all the time, but that you can feel the energy. And I think that was, it was more like energy swaps mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. most of the characters. Yeah, we wanted to capture the, the essence as opposed to doing just like a, an impression of mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. But you, you use every tool you have at your disposal to, to do that, mm -hmm. whether it is a physical mannerism or whatever. But I think our, our focus was finding the energy of each yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Thank you all so much for your time. Congrats on the movie. It was a pleasure speaking with you, and it's a great movie, guys. Thank I had so you much so fun much. watching it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Brittany. Hi, James. Hi, Rena. Hi, David. Sophia Hi. Hi. So good to see all of you, and congrats on the movie. It is such a blast. I really had a great time with it. Thank you. Thanks. Of course. So I want to start off by asking, what did you consider to be the key to playing multiple characters for this film? The rehearsal. 
Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the yeah. rehearsal process. Yeah. The rehearsal <laughs> collaboration. Yeah, yeah so, we had that yeah. week of rehearsal at the top where we all kind of learned each other's mannerisms a bit and, you know, and experimented, you know, with each other's characters and we were recording everything and it, it gave us, you know, kind of resources and, and videos. But for myself, I, I felt like I had like different like music for different characters mm. and that was different playlists. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we all had to kind of make sure we were swimming toward the same destination on this one just because there was so much going on and we were all kind of having to change perspectives throughout the story so often that uh yeah we just we had to make sure we we're really on the same page each and every step of the way so there you really this was a process where everyone really had to lean into one another mm. Yeah. And going off of that, what was kind of one quality or tell that you came up with for your character that you start with prior to the swaps that like fans could point to to recognize your character throughout the film? That's a good question. That's a great question. Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> it, Greg came up with it was in the script for Brooke. She repeats herself a lot. She'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Like she'll say one word multiple times. Um, and that was definitely her biggest tell. And also, she's very fidgety. You know, she has a very, like, buzzy, anxious energy, and I feel like there's a lot of, like, hair, a lot of gum chewing, a lot of just, like, spazzy energy that I think was um, crucial when switching bodies. Cyrus is always kind of repeating what he's saying because he, he's trying to be honest but doesn't want to be uh, exposed. So he's kind of always going between those two polarities and is kind of trapped, so finds himself doubling back on sentences and can't quite get a clean thought out. I, I, I was talking a lot, you know, Forbes hasn't really seen this group of friends in a while. He kind of, they kind of lost touch. <clears throat> and so I feel like in the beginning when we first meet everyone in this amazing big kind of one you know, shot throughout the entire house. We see like this, their, their rapport and, and they have this snappy energy and everyone's, you know, cutting each other off and sort of finish each other's sentences. And, and then when Forbes come in, um, Greg and I talked about kind of, he has a different rhythm and, and there's just sort of, you know, uh, he doesn't, it kind of it's a little more slowed down and subdued and, and uh, doesn't quite uh, mesh as, as evenly as, you know, as everyone else does. Yeah, Shelby's nervous system is, you know, on high alert all the time. Her amygdala is just overactive. So anytime she's she's getting the hang of the game and getting the hang of just being around people. So um, that was one thing that we talked about because we, well, am I allowed to give that away? Yeah. Shoot. You can talk spoilers. Yeah. I'll hold it. Don't oh, okay, worry. cool. Go when we you switch. Can do whatever you want. Don't yeah, yeah. When we switch, um, I think that that would, like, Shelby gets figured out, at, like, yeah, <laughs> that because she's like, <gasps> yeah, she's got no oh, chill. Oh yeah, yeah, she's yeah. got no chill. <laughs> Love that. Well, thank you all so much for your time. Again, super amazing movie. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait for everyone else to see it. Thank yeah. you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Hi, Greg. Sophia Soto with the Nerds of Color, and the outfit is just incredible today. <laughs> thank I you. Love thank it you. So thank much. you. Likewise. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And along with the incredible outfit, you also have such an incredible movie here. I had so much fun watching it. And I have to talk to you about spoilers. So we are going to talk spoilers and then hold it till after the release Let's because I have many questions. Sure, sure. So I have to talk about the ending, first of all. Can you tell me how you landed on it and if there were any other ideas you had? Because I thought it was a really good ending. Like, and a good twist, of course, but like final scene too. Like specifically the Shelby Cyrus stuff or like the Forbes Beatrice stuff? Both. Both, okay. <laughs> the Both. Forbes... We gotta go down the line. Okay, let's do it, let's do it. The, the, the twist that Forbes was not Forbes was something that I came up with like in the very nascent stages that I thought was like a... You know, like I got very excited about that. I was like, "Oh man, if the guy with the suitcase wasn't even the guy, that would be nuts!" Uh, and so I, I was like super stoked on that. In the initial idea, it was not his sister; it was like his lackey at work that he had wronged. Um, you know, I like I I sent the script to a bunch of friends, and they're all, you know I got the the collective note that you know it's like you know like it's a cool twist, but it kind of like 
it's kind of a bummer that this character has nothing to do with the rest of the group. And I remember I was like talking to one of my friends on the phone. I was like, oh, like, oh yeah, like, like it could be Forbes' sister, and she could be the girl who hooked up with Dennis at this party. I already had that plot point of Dennis hooked up with a girl at a party, so it, you know, you know, it kind of fell into place. Um, and then in terms of the sh the Cyrus Shelby stuff, uh, I had from the get go. Cyrus and Shelby are in a relationship in crisis. Cyrus is a rather neglectful kind of gaslighting boyfriend uh, who does not value um, his girlfriend, but sort of gaslights her about it. And then he kind of gets some comeuppance at the end. My original, original idea was to have it be like a darker ending, almost more of like, of like a Black Mirror ending where she does stay in Nikki's body and Nikki visits him in jail and basically, you know, like tells him to F off. And it kind of ends with that, like, yeah, like, like, a, like almost like a, you know, like a very dark ending. Like it's like this character got what she wanted. Uh, she, she got it as a result of her relationship, but now we're not sure how to feel about it. Really once we started getting, really once like I cast the actors, saw what they were doing, heard the music, knew what the music at the end was gonna be. I was like, oh, like, like it should be, like it's stronger if it's just this like big victory moment. So then I, like, I kind of pivoted and, you know, and had Shelby go back in her own body. And then once she delivers that speech to him, really just seeing Britney do it, like it did feel satisfying. Uh, so, yeah. but you know, it, it was one of those things where, you know, you, you, you kind of have to like try uh, like other ideas and then see them kind of not working and then t to land on the one that does. Yeah, it was satisfying. Oh, I loved you. it. You made a great choice. Oh, and then in terms of the characters that were going to die and which bodies they were going to die in, how did you choose that? Were there other like options or you always kind of knew like, okay, these two characters, round two, we're going to kill them off? Um, I I knew Dennis, the i.e. the guy with the trust fund was going to die because the trust fund had some plot implications and, and, and yes. him kind of getting his money. And then, I, and then I, I came up with the idea that Maya, Maya's body would die, so, but, um, but because she believed in, in reincarnation, like, like the whole idea of making Maya a Buddhist who believes in reincarnation was, I, I just needed a character who was like okay with now living in, in someone else's body and that not being a conflict for them. So that all kind of came out of that. But then like, you know, the, the kind of bohemian free spirit and nature of Maya, it's based on like someone I went to high school with. And uh, I, yeah, I mean, I just love, I love her character and I love Nina's portrayal of, like, of her so much. Yeah. And lastly, very quick, which character had your favorite tell? Ooh, uh, okay. For, like, first off the top of my head, I'm gonna say Cyrus, just because I think James Morcini's like stutter thing that he does and his inability yeah. to finish his sentence, that was something that fit. Like they're stuttering in, in the script, but when we started working together on set and rehearsal, like he really brought it to this other level. And I just think he's, He's so funny, and you know, like I love the scene where he's talking to Forbes, and he doesn't ever finish a thought. I just, yeah, I think it's so funny, and I love what he did. So, yeah, we'll say Cyrus. Well, I love what you do with this movie. Thank you so much Thank again you. for your time, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Lectures, fanboys, professional artists, and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC in full color. You see. The hard not like comics, movies, and TV, yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen, hit play, so check this.